Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to this uh, under investigation video. So today we're looking at uh, something special, uh, but not necessarily in a good way. Um, so we're going to take a look at the race start. So this is a management review of the last GT3 sprint race start. Um, so as you're guys going to see in the next few um, <clears throat> few images uh there was a large wreck on the last uh, gt3 uh sprint fixed uh not sprint but fixed race uh start uh we're gonna make sure we cover all the details here um so what we are currently seeing is the blue porsche being on the pole and uh it follows a large rack from the Porsche back there. And then, of course, uh, a domino effect for the rest. <clears throat> um, so first thing we want to cover here is... Um, so as a, as a pole sitter in uh, PRL, you have uh, some responsibility. And those are to maintain... Uh, a steady speed throughout the pace lap so of course you are able to um to manage the gap to, with the pace car which we see on, on the top right of the, of the screen you're allowed to do so uh because you're in control of the field however you need uh you need to do a uh have a steady pace and within our worlds um, we have a speed variation uh, limit that you need to follow in order to keep, let's say, a, a, a stable grid. Because going uh, fast and then breaking back and then going again will create uh, accordion effects. And those uh, accordion effects makes uh, a lot of uh, unpredictability, I would say, in the in the field. So what we see here is uh, pole sitter had a decent gap with um, with the pace car, right? Um, and was a, a lot in front. So normally that's not something we we would like to see from the other cars uh we want a a pack that's bunched so let's take a look at the speed exactly so the pace i don't know exactly what's the uh, pace car speed here so of course we're braking uh, on the last corner so going around 80 kph here and then 90, 100, 110, 120, and then 5, and then breaks back to, so I would say probably lifts towards the first corner. So one. So max speed uh, here is, so the pace car is about to enter the pits. Uh, all right, so we have 134, all right, 134. It's probably the highest we have. And then slows down back to 18717. So about 25 kph difference what does it do uh we have p2 here i believe that's ray yeah uh, that felt that the race was started already and uh went for it uh and he did cross since he was in p2 crossing uh the start finish line before p1 would give him a black flag <coughs> for a jump start and then all the others uh kind of waited for p1 but that would make 
uh, the rear pretty bunched up, right? Unnecessary bunch, bunched up. So clearly a break of the rules. I'm trying to get the rules right now um, for the speed difference. I don't want to say anything uh, stupid. Um, race start. So the rule says uh, the pole sitter must maintain a pace. Plus minus 8 kph and may not overly fluctuate speed on the pace lap. So let's take a look from uh, cockpit view. Put the sound on from the um, <clears throat> the chicane. Alright, and let's take a look from the other cars. Look like uh, from J Rod perspective. Uh it's now. Oops. Alright, and Ray. Alright, so he went for it. <laughs> So that's from P4. Let's take a look from P5. All right. Do P6. start uh, p7 all right so receive the car in the face and p8 now So from a, up until that point, I mean, the incidents are just crazy. Uh, maybe the blimp camera will will help. So yeah, from what I see, so over fluctuating uh, um, car speed, pace car speed, uh, pull sitter. So and then uh, nobody wanted to. Didn't know what what to do really, um, so and very very slow start. I mean, it's not again, it's not against rules, but if it would have uh, been steady, then maybe not all of this would have happened. Um, so I mean, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we had something similar in uh, VIR, so we will apply a similar penalty, of course. Have a nice uh, week, guys. Stay safe.